Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo-Ukrainian war. It is your host with Union and in this one we have a lot of developments. The Ukrainians managed to recapture significant parts of the Siversk section of the front line and recapture some parts in the southern flank of Toretsk. The Russians in turn managed to advance further in the flanks of Kurohove as well as in the northern flank of Toretsk within Chesavyar itself, and they entered the cross-border area into Ukraine, both in the Chernihiv and the Kharkiv regions. These are likely to simply be some PR moves, and there's more to the one in the Chernihiv region, but more on that later. We start out in the southern direction, to the south of Antonivka and Yelisevativka, the Russians managed to advance to the south of the settlement, moving along the main road towards Yelisevatyvska. As they further strengthen the eastern road, they are now fighting over the central road and then moving on to the western road, where fighting is taking place along the forest patches here in between Yelisevatyvska and Vesely High. The three roads is the ones along the Forest patch, which is the western road, then the central road directly towards Yelisevatyvka, and the eastern road towards the eastern parts of the settlement. The Russians have control over the eastern part, now fighting over the central part, following which they will be flanking Yelisevatyvka from the western side. Moving further north towards Kurohove, the Russians in the northern flank entered Nova Ilinka, capturing the northeastern parts of it and fighting in the southern outskirts of Bereski. At the same time, they've managed to capture significant portions of the forest lines to the south of the fortified position, northeast of Bereski, and towards Bereski itself, reaching the outskirts of the settlement. So there are three axes of attack by the Russians. They are moving in the northern direction towards the fortified positions, in the western direction towards Bereski, and in the southern direction occupying the majority of Nova Ilinka in the southern direction. The Russians are here focusing on gaining control over the eastern parts of the railways from Bereski to Osnesenka in the north. After that, they will be able to move towards Seriterni and south of Sunsivka either to flank Sunsivka from the south or to move through a river crossing towards Seri Terni. In either case, the Russians are slowly moving along the northern flank of Kurohove after gaining full control over the eastern fortified positions of Kurohove and Dalia in the south. The heavy fighting continues to close the southern pocket south of Kurohove, following which they can capture the remaining parts of Kurohove with a pincer maneuver from the north and from the south. In the direction of Novoleksivka, the Russians have managed to secure the western parts of the settlement and advance further within the direction of Yurivka into the settlement and push towards Pustinka, both from the eastern direction and with fighting in the northern flank of it as well. Therefore, we see heavy fighting taking place to capture the two settlements of Yurivka and Pustinka. Moving on to the Turetsk direction, there is a very volatile section of the front line here. The Russians have managed to advance in the central parts of the city and in the northern flank, capturing the remaining parts of the fortified positions and moving on to the railways to flank the remaining parts of Drushpe from the west. The objective here is likely to flank the defensive line of the Ukrainians near Drushpe along the railways, gain access to it, and then advance back down south towards Drushpe, securing the remaining parts of the settlement, and then moving on towards Ekrimsky to capture the heights located in the northern parts of Toretsk, as well as the industrial area there. This will allow the Russians to then flank the entire city itself from the northern direction, either by moving along the railways towards Dashne and Ilivka, or to move towards the hills in the rear of the city. The Ukrainians do have fortified positions behind Toretsk, which are located on heights as well. The longer back towards Kostantinivka you go, the higher the elevation. This means that the Russians would be fighting an uphill battle with several fortified positions of the Ukrainians. In general, the most difficult part of Toretsk, in terms of the Russians capturing it, was the first lines of defense in Shumir, Pivdene, Selishne, and the general area to the south and east of the city itself, and then the western parts and central parts of the settlement, which are located in the ending parts of the battle. And therefore, the current situation is at the level as the defensive positions in the eastern direction, except the Russians don't have a tunnel to move through to flank the Ukrainian positions, and this is why they're facing a stalemate, with some positional fighting here and there, 
extremely heavy fighting, but not a lot of progress, which is turning Tretsk into a meat grinder for both sides. In the southern districts, the Ukrainians continue their flanking maneuver in an attempt to kick the Russians out of the southern flank and flank the Russian positions by capturing the forest patch, conduct some guerrilla warfare within it, and hit the supply lines of the Russians by moving alongside these areas. The objective would be to cut the road, the main highway, from Pivnishne to Toretsk. However, the Russians are securing their northern flank, expanding their zone of control to avoid such an operation, while at the same time they're fighting in the southern district of Toretsk, yet again re-entering the parts of it. Their objective would be to regain control of the heights in the southern parts of it to cut off this flanking maneuver. So we see heavy fighting in the Toretsk direction with a bit of back and forth. In the Chasov Yard direction, there is some geolocated footage showing Russian forces moving into the central parts of the city. With this, the Russians have gotten closer to the center of it, and fighting over this part will be a significant change to the front line in this section of it, as gaining control of the central parts of Chasov Yard will split the Ukrainian forces into the southern and northern parts. If the Russians manage to link up between the Sultan forces and the Central forces, they'll be able to then launch a strong operation towards Mikolaivka, Chavone, Sopushki in the south, and generally significantly improve their positions here within Chasov Yar, and to link up with the Northern forces as well, will allow the Russians to gain full control over the city. Therefore, we see that with this push into the central parts of Chasov Yar, the beginning of the end of the Battle of Chasov Yar is taking place, Unlike the Tretsk direction, Jasov Yar is strongest in the eastern direction and there's no significant defensive positions in the western parts, although there's a lot of fortified positions along the western parts of the city. These are not located at a high elevation, they are not overlooking the city, and most importantly, there's no heights that the Ukrainians have control of, which will create a choke point for the Russian forces. What they did have was the tiny distance between the northern and southern parts here in between the eastern and central parts of Yasev Yar, but now that the Russians have pushed through and entered into the central parts, which is the most difficult fighting that is going to take place within the city itself, as it is a mix of an industrial area and apartment complex buildings, which is very difficult to push through in urban warfare. It is also a part of the city where the Russians have now entered into and are now fighting on even grounds with the Ukrainians. Therefore, the heaviest fighting will take place here in the central parts of Chesov Yar. But if the Russians win this battle over the central parts, then the end of Chesov Yar is within sight, and the Russians will gain full control over the city, unless the Ukrainians launch some sort of large-scale counterattack to regain control of it. That is unlikely to be the case, similar to how in Bakhmut, once the Russians managed to capture the flanks of the city, the city was lost. If the Russians managed to capture the industrial and high-rise apartment complex area in the center of Chesov Yar, then the battle of the city has ended. It would be more in line with the Russian capture of the central industrial zone of Krasnorivka. Once the Russians captured the industrial zone within the city, the battle of the city had ended. Instead, it was just the beginning of the Russian clearing out the rest of the remainder of the city, and the Ukrainians had no chance of recapturing it. Moving up further north to the Sivas section of the front line to a place where the Ukrainians have had much more success throughout this entire war, it is the most successful part of the front line, really. Nowhere else competes with this in terms of small scale operational success. The Ukrainian commander in this section of the front line has yet again proven that he is able to defend this section of the front line, make the most use of the situation and the, his forces available, and it has allowed him to push the Russians out of Vernokamyansky yet again. The Russian leaders in this area have tried several different tactics. They have managed to succeed bit by bit, but have failed much more times. The area here, Siversk, is the real meat grinder for the Russian forces, Nothing else stands true to that. The Russians have been unable to capture Siversk. That is a fact that cannot be changed. Therefore, we see that the current situation is that the Russians have been unable to capture Siversk. They have been unable to capture Vechno Kamyansky. 
and they have now been pushed back to Belorivka and their fortified positions east of Vernokamianske. However, in the grand scheme of things, Seversk does not mean much. The Russians are capturing Chesev Yard, they are moving into Koretsk, they are fighting over Kurohove, they have captured Selidove, they have captured Avdivka, they are moving towards Pokrovsk, they are fighting in the Zaporizhia section of the front line, they are fighting in Kharkiv, they are fighting near Kupiansk, they have entered into the city itself. The Ukrainians have moved into Kursk and are sacrificing their soldiers to hold a superficial, meaningless section of the front line. The Russians have done their own PR sets before and they're doing it yet again with the capture of Sonotsky Kosakhok. The Russians have previously entered this settlement and then they moved out of it again. It is likely that this is similar, that they just move in and out. They just to okay, take some pictures with some flags, just like the Ukrainians have done several times. In the Chernihiv region, it's more interesting because here we see that the area itself that they've captured is surrounded by the Sudist River to the south and the Desna River to the east. With this, the Russians have actually captured the river bank here along the border area, so they may not withdraw from this. Instead, they may just hold on to it because it is a natural defensible area. It's also an area that could naturally be added by a natural border. It actually baffles me that the border was not set to run along this river line, considering how it acts as a natural border between Russia and Ukraine with the river line moving through. The Russian capture of Moravi and this bridge here east of Hremyak was captured on video with footage of the Russian flags being raised near the bridge and within Moravi. So with this we see that the Russians have entered into the border area, what the objective is, if there's anything more to it, nothing is known, but it is unlikely that the Russians will enter into Ukraine again before they have recaptured Kursk, unless the Russians want to enter into the Chernihiv region or the northern flank of the Sumy region to force the Ukrainians to abandon the Kursk region to defend their northern flank. In either case, this just too much speculation and no facts. All we know is that the Russians have entered with a few reconnaissance groups, set up some flags, and that's about it. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out my Patreon and YouTube membership for additional content. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.